Ladies and gentlemen, you are about to see The Naked City. I'm Bert Leonard, the producer. As you see, we're flying over an island, a city, a particular city. And this is a story of a number of people and a story also of the city itself. It was not photographed in a studio, quite the contrary. The actors played out their roles in a church on 10th Avenue, in a supermarket on 23rd Street, and in the loft buildings of Lower Manhattan. Most people in far off places seem to think that all of New York literally never sleeps, that its whole length and breadth blazes and pulses with artificial light after the sun goes down. It isn't like that at all. You plunge into darkness a few blocks off Times Square no matter what direction you take. Just below Greenwich Village, for example, there are great clusters of dark, untidy old loft buildings. Workers creep into them in the morning, shuffle out again at night, and the neighborhood knows a dead, solemn quiet. Yet there are riches hidden in these ill-lighted patches of the naked city. Safes stuffed with currency, vaults packed with mink and sable and chinchilla. Almost done, sir. And I, uh, I saw two men start to climb down. At the same time, this big fella comes in the front door. Ben was between me and him. I ducked behind the bale and prepared to engage him. All of a sudden, I, I see Ben break and run for the back door. The, uh, the big guy swung around and fired at Ben from the hip. Looked like a, like a Browning automatic rifle. And Ben went down. I got off a shot at the big guy, and then I fired at the two men by the skylight. I think I hit one of them. Then it got real quiet. I looked around, and they were gone. Then I went over to Ben. He was over at the far side of the room, dead, shot in the back. Did you actually see him running away? Well, yes, sir, I did. That'll be all, Keller. You did a fine job under the most hazardous circumstances. Officers like you are a credit to the force. Sir, may I, uh, may I say something else? Go ahead. It may be that uh, Lieutenant Rogan was not running away. I mean, it could have simply been that he was trying to seek a more advantageous position from which to fight. We'll give that full consideration, Keller. The evidence is clear cut. And we have the testimony of Detective Keller. Is there any doubt in the mind of any member of this board? Then let it be so entered on the service record of Lieutenant Benjamin Rogan. Don't look at me like that, Dan. He was my friend, too. Ben was never a man to run from anything, Inspector. 
There's a first time for everything, Dan. In Ben's case, it was a last time, too. You know him, Frank? Rogan? Yeah, I knew him. He was always talking about a nice place out in Long Island when he retired. Wanted to raise ducks. Looks like he didn't make it. Okay, Dan, if you want it that way, I'll have the Bureau cut you set a temporary order. Thanks. It seems to me you worked the uh, safe loft and truck squad before, uh, back in 44, wasn't it? 34. Well, it hasn't changed much. Say, Dan, uh, these takeouts aren't exactly picnics, you know. There's one more favor I'll ask you, Inspector. What's that? Assign young Keller to me. Now, Dan, you can't be thinking what I think you're thinking. You don't know anything about young Keller. But I didn't know Ben. Keller's got a good record. Been in tough spots before. About Ben, isn't it possible, Dan, that even the toughest paratrooper can make 50 combat jumps and still freeze in the 51st? That applies to Ben, Inspector. Why not young Keller? Look, Dan, we checked that loft right down the line. Keller's story is just like it was. You're going to have to accept it for what it is, just like the rest of us. Let's leave it. I want a hand in finding the men who killed Ben. I think young Keller might be able to help. And nothing else? Do I get him? OK. They ought to have stop and go signals. Betty, I can't find the baking soda anywhere. Fine detective. By carbonate of soda, yes. Baking soda, no. Is there a difference? The next time you want me to bake a cake, I'll show you. All right. You push the cart. I'll do the scouting. Safe Loft and Truck Squad is attached to the Central Office Bureau of the Detective Division. 
The M.O. is the same in each of these loft jobs. Three men, a big guy, two other guys. They're all dressed the same. Surplus stuff, flight coveralls, rubber sneakers. First, they knock out the alarm system, muffle the master bell. Then they make a two-way entry through the skylight, through another door on a lower level. Incidentally, they carry their own cutting equipment, settle and torches, the works. They've got a timer to the second. As soon as the two guys climb down, the big guy comes in to cover them. Keller here reports he pops in clean, this big guy, packing a lot of gun. A Browning automatic rifle. Some of you men were in the infantry. You know what an AR can do. It's a rugged piece of equipment when you're looking it in the eye. And a man can hip fire 20 rounds at you before you can hit the ground. Now, this big guy, when he sees opposition, he just cuts loose. Remember that, in case you get a front sight on him. This two-way entry deal of theirs is pretty tricky. It's strictly a diversionary tactic. It gives them two ways to run out in case there's anybody left around there to chase them. Now, we've got our spots. Let's stick with them until we get these three hoods in the lineup or in the morgue, okay? <clears throat> Must have been rough seeing Ben shot down like that. Fear can do terrible things to a man. Must have been rough. What, sir, believe me. We do, son. That's why it's just you and me. If anyone's to have another chance out of my calculate, it should be us. Uh, by the way, I have a stop to make. Would you like to come along? Detective Keller, this is Rogan. And that's Janie over there. Uh, yes, he was the lad with, with Ben when it happened. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to stare at you. That's all right. We're working together now for a while. I thought maybe Ben would like it that way. Well, you've come at a good time. <laughs> Very good time. Now, Janie, tell Lieutenant Muldoon what we were arguing about. Mother! Well, it's nothing private. Go ahead, tell him. This. Seems like a gown fine enough for a fairy princess. Now, you see? It has nothing to do with it. Would you go to a party if your father had just been killed? But does your mother want you to? Yes. Yes, she does. Ask her. Go to her well, my way. Gentleman, Ben was. Learned man, too, though you never know it. He was never one to quote things or show off his learning. Short stories, that's what he liked most. He held a man up to the light in time of crisis, he used to tell me. You could learn from them. He was especially concerned with crisis, Ben was. How a man behaved in a time of stress. That was a man's true measure, he used to say. Ironic, isn't it, that when his crisis came, he couldn't look it in the eye, and that he died the most degrading kind of death for a man like Ben, from behind, in the dark. She's free to go. Well, now that's that. Fine boy that's taking her. And it's a first date. Ben knew the boy and he liked him. But we can't just let her sit around the house and mope. Life must go on. And no complaints. It's a 
truth. Well, I just came by to tell you that if there's anything you'll be wanting, anything I can do, you want me to call. Thank you. You're a great comfort, Dad. Mrs. Rogan, I, I'm sorry about... about everything. Goodbye. Bye, son. Sure. Wipe your forehead, lads, covered with perspiration. Don't think I'm not on to you. Congratulations. I know what you're trying to do. You're just like all the old timers. Huh? You have to stick together. You're trying to get me to whitewash Ben, aren't you? To change my story. Change it to what, lad? That whole business today, dragging me along to meet the widow. That was a pretty rotten thing to do. For her or for you? Truck. They don't usually come through the skylight. Better compose yourself, Mr. Keller. It's a long night. you're up to. We figured it out. Well, why not? You're both brilliant lads. Even Alan sees what I'm after. Well, then how do you expect him to give himself away? Jimmy, my boy, what happens if you irritate an oyster long? You get a pearl. Head of the class. Young Keller's got a bad kink in his soul. May even be as a man incapable of squaring his values with his actions. Right now, he's in deep water. He's beginning to thrash around. But what if they hit your loft? He's not going to be much good to you, is he? Well, I mean, if you're right about him. Stooley is a nasty word in polite society. P.I., that's more euphemous, police informer. Eli was the lieutenant's P.I. Heels. Rubber. Nothing wrong with these heels, Mark. They look new to me. They squeak. Did you ever try walking the squeak out? Do you mind? Okay, Mark, okay. It's your money. Anything yet, Eli? All right, Eli, let's try another angle. I'm staked out in Rolstein's loft on 18th. Pass the word, there's a quarter million of mink just moved in. You want to find me in a pearl that bag? You don't want to see your pet stool, you know, more maybe? That's a straight here, right? Rolstein's getting his fall shipment in right now. Info like that can get you more visitors than Jersey's got mosquitoes. Three weeks now we've been staked out. Night after night, every weekend. Not a nibble. Eli, I want the men who killed Ben. Okay, okay, I'll try.
I've known ever since the hearing. 11.27. I have to leave at 11.30. have to meet him. have to spend the night with him again. Darling, talk to me. It's the only way. What are you jabbering about? Listen to me. It doesn't matter if you're afraid. Not as long as you admit it. Just admit it to me. You'll feel better. You'll see. Has Lieutenant Muldoon been here? Lieutenant Muldoon! He's been telling you things? Why can't I reach you? Look, Alan, I've got so used to living in the eyes and heart of someone close to me. You. I've become almost nothing to myself. Can't you see what happens to you inside happens to me even more? No matter what your job, I love you. Being on the police force isn't the beginning or the end of life, or of us. Miss Keller, I was just passing. Is your husband ready? Sir, I got an idea. If they should come, I'm going to bait a trap. I'm going to move away from that door. And I'm going to cover the two who come through the skylight. It's one in a million they'll come. I mean, I had them once. And I'm going to walk toward them. Now, if the rascal with the big gun should move in behind me, then it'll be up to you. If you should hesitate for even a second, I'd be a dead man, wouldn't I? And I'd fall, I imagine, just there, under the skylight. Shot in the back. Now, do you suppose if that were to happen, someone might move me just after, say, to the other side of the room? Don't move. Lieutenant! Dan? Come on down, lad. You okay? Not a scratch. At least none of the shows. Mr. Keller, thanks for calling out. I'll not forget that. I don't expect thanks. I know what I have to do. I can't ask you to understand. I don't myself. Every man is on a stakeout each day of his life, waiting for the sudden hot burst of crisis, expecting it, but hoping it never comes. 
Because until it comes, who can say which of us will meet it honorably or which of us will fail? There are eight million stories in the Naked City. This has been one of them. <laughs>